Hey, what's up, everybody? Big Mike back again with Wrestling Rants Reviews. And I'm introducing you to the debut show of, that's right, Tell Me More with Big Mike. And the concept of this show is it's going to be every Friday, and it's basically a Q&A show. So I want everybody to send me their Q&A questions. That's right, send me some questions. Send them to my inbox, though. That's the only thing I ask. And uh, I'll tell you anything you want to know about me, about wrestling, about my dog. Yes, I have a dog. Maybe you didn't know that. Maybe that's a question you want to ask me. How many pets do I have? Um, you know, so this question or this segment of the show is about me. Uh, not to sound conceited or anything, but it's about for you fans, friends, subscribers, whatever you want to call yourselves, you know, acquaintances, uh, passerbys, whatever. You know, it's for you to get to know all about me. And uh, that's what it's all about. Uh, a lot of you guys have known for the past year, not year, past week or so, that this has been coming. You sent in some of your questions. You even tried to name my show for me. So please don't take the offense that I didn't use your name and I went to something as easy as Tell Me More with Big Mike. Um, I don't know. I just kind of like it. Um, but yes, welcome to the debut show. Um, I will be telling you more about me in a few seconds here, maybe a few minutes. Um, because I'm going to take this time and tell you a little bit about this day in wrestling history. Um, because I didn't make a video for it today because there's nothing to really tell you about. There is one event and one piece of useless knowledge. There was no uh, G1 tournaments. There was no uh, birthdays. There was no memoriams. There was uh, nothing crazy to write home about. So let's get to that. Then we'll get to the debut of uh, Tell Me More of Big Mike. So moving into this day in wrestling history for August the 19th. Not only is this history, the, the B debut show of Tell Me More, but this was too. Back in 2002, after tonight's Raw, the 24-7 rule in WWF Hardcore, or the WWE Hardcore title, is deactivated. And the event for today was SummerSlam, and it was the first pay-per-view which saw WWF and WCW titles defended. It was held in San Jose, California in 2001. We see Edge defeat Lance Storm to win the Intercontinental title. Uh, X-Pac defeats Tajiri to unify the Cruiserweight and Light Heavyweight titles. RVD defeats Jeff Hardy in a ladder match to win the WWF title. Hardcore title, my bad. The Brothers of Destruction, Kane and Undertaker, defeat DDP and Canyon in a cage match to win the WWF and WCW Tag Team titles. Kurt Angle defeats Steve Austin by DQ. Austin retains the WWF title, and The Rock defeats Booker T to win the WCW title. And that's that for today in Wrestling History for August 19th. Now on to the debut show. That's right, the debut show. Tell me more, Big Mike. And it's going to start right now. And the very first question on the inaugural... Show is from Fort Minor Project, and he asked me if Gail Molina being let go is a work, how would you add them to the Diva, uh, Divas of Doom stable and to make women's wrestling good and fun again, like we have been seeing? Well, Dave, if you don't mind me saying your name, I guess it's too late, I already did. Um, what I would do is I would probably start at the Night of Champions pay per view. Um, I would have some sort of melee type action take place. Um, I would have Beth Phoenix versus Kelly Kelly in a rematch. Um, with Natty, her and Italia in her corner, and um, Eve and um, what's her faces, Kelly's, and I'd have a big melee happen and have the other girls that were at ringside tossed to the back, leaving Beth versus uh, Kelly Kelly but like by herself. And then, as we think that Kelly Kelly's got the upper hand, or maybe there's a double down, and both women are out, we see Gail Kim make her way through the crowd, and. Uh, she picks up the Divas title, and she smokes Kelly with it, thus giving the win to uh, Beth Phoenix, and uh, ultimately adding Gil Kim back to the to the roster and to the Divas of Doom stable. We would find out more about why she joined through the weeks on SmackDown, possibly, or Raw. Um, we would have the three of them together, um, you know, Natty, Beth, and Gail. Kelly Kelly would revoke her rematch clause, and what is it in October? What pay-per-view? Um... <clears throat> I can't even tell you right now. Uh, let me see. I feel bad for not knowing this. Um, let me see this. I feel really stupid. Um, uh, someone tell me. Someone tell me. Um, oh my god, I can't believe I don't remember. Is it Fatal 4-Way? Maybe. Um, I can't. Shit. 
I feel really bad for not knowing. <laughs> and I feel really bad for pausing and stumbling. Um, it's Hell in a Cell. There we go. It's Hell in a Cell. I knew it was one of those gimmicky ones. That's probably why I forgot. But anyways, moving into Hell in a Cell. Um, obviously, we're not going to see the Divas have a Hell in a Cell match. So, I would see... Um, having like a six-way... Um, you know, with uh, Beth and Gail and uh, Natalia versus, let's say, Kelly Kelly, um, Eve, and let's see, who else could they use? Let's say uh, Caitlin or AJ, depending on the feud with Natalia on SmackDown. So it would be with those three versus, versus those three. It would come down to Beth and Kelly Kelly once again. And this time, Melina, that's right, Melina would make her way through the crowd, looking like she's going to get revenge on Beth Phoenix, or maybe because, uh, you know, um, last time it was Gil Kim, so this time the fans are going to think, oh, Melina's here to save Kelly Kelly. No, once again, beating down Kelly Kelly, and thus joining um, the Divas of Doom stable and... It would lead to a match of Survivor Series 4-on-4. Four four. Um, that would be Caitlyn, AJ, Eve, and Kelly Kelly versus the Divas of Doom. And I think that would just be your feud. So if that makes sense, maybe it does. Maybe I went too far with it because I made the stupid pause. But that's what I would do. So uh, hopefully it's good enough. Anyways, also another question for Fort Minor Project. How would you book Goldberg's rumored return and what would you have him do? Um, I would have him come back almost immediately, and I would have him join forces with CM Punk, and I would have him take out Kevin Nash on the part of CM Punk. Um, yeah, that's basically how I would have it. I would have CM Punk maybe getting the upper hand on uh, Nash. Um, and then maybe Triple H would come down and, uh, you know, take care of CM Punk, and then Goldberg would come out and give the spear to Triple H, maybe, I don't know, ultimately ending up with a, I don't know, um, I don't know, that's how I'd have him come back. I'd have him involved with those top guys right now, and I think it would be, uh, it would be over. Um, I think Goldberg and CM Punk, it's really weird. I know it sounds really weird because they're both kind of loners, but uh, I'd be a way to get Goldberg over because you know Goldberg is over. Well, he was over like how long ago now? Eight years ago? I don't think he would be as over with the crowd right now, so re to align him with Punk would help keep him over, and uh, I think he could have a good feud with Nash. And CM Punk could have a feud with Triple H leading into whatever they want to go, whatever they want to do. So, yeah, definitely that's what I would do. Hopefully that's good enough, too. Um, I really don't think too much about Goldberg. I never liked him. I think Goldberg's a big piece of fucking trash. Um, everybody's just hyped up because of his stupid uh, undefeated streak, which we all know is written anyways. And he's got less moves than John Cena. And he's just a jacked up piece of shit. And it was WCW's answer to Stone Cold. When Bischoff fired Steve Austin and Steve Austin said, I want to be Stone Cold. You know, this is my look. I'm going to shave my head, black boots, black tights. Bischoff said it would never work. And once it started to work in the WWF, what did he do? He just went and got himself a fucking uber jacked fucking Stone Cold. And uh, gave him an undefeated streak. And he's got, like I said, he's worse than fucking John Cena. He's got less moves. What has he got? A, big, a fucking round, like a kick? A spear and a jackhammer. That's it. He's a piece of shit. Um, and that's that. But anyways, <laughs> moving on to the next question. From Chronics and Crystal, right on, from over in the most extreme wrestling. Um, a couple of my favorite people to watch. Definitely, definitely one of my favorite channels. Um, if you could be immortalized as a statue, what pose would you forever be in? Please demonstrate. As much as I would love to demonstrate, 
I would have to put all my gear on. And what do you mean by gear? Well, my get up for my manager's get up for wrestling. I'm going to get into that after my next few questions because the last couple videos or last within the last week or two, I've talked about my manager's stuff. And a lot of people are asking me uh, in private boxes or whatever in the inboxes, tell me more. So I will tell you more in a minute. But uh, I'd have to put all my stuff on and, you know, do whatever. And if I actually stand up here, too, the way my cam is, you would see from, like, here down. And there's no way for me to go back because my bed's right here. So, but anyways, this is the best way I can demonstrate. Um, I was thinking the one on the left right here where this finger is is how I'd want to be. Um, I would either be posed like that for the rest of my life. Or I would have cash. I'd be holding cash as well as, you know, pretending I know what time it is. Um, I'd probably look a little bit better, too, because since then, I've got a new hat and a new shirt. <laughs> Looks a little bit better, but that's how I'd want to be. As you can see, the big money, that's the back of my jacket, you know, stuff like that. But anyways, yeah, that's me. It's big money. Um, sign, anybody want to buy a signed 8x10? Please visit uh, Tell Me More. With Big Mike at uh, www.tellmemorewithbigmike.com. Uh, Shop Zone, that's right. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, only $5. Just send me a sofa dress stamp envelope. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope that helps. Um, that's how I'd want to be. And uh, my next few questions come from Triple D, aka Dean448. Um, this guy likes to send me more than one. He to send me five at a time, which is fine. It fills up the time, and I can't believe it's almost 12 minutes in. But, anyways, I'm going to go with it. I'm going with it. Um, if you could be... Oh, it's my bad. No, I'm from Triple D, a.k.a. D448. Did you like WCW? Yes, I loved WCW. I was always a fan right from around... Uh, you know, right in the early days of it. Right from the beginning of it. Because um, I followed NWA right into it and right till the day it died. And I preferred it. I always did. Um, if you could be involved in any match, what type would you, of match would you be in and why? If I could, um, probably a handicap match. And I would want to be on the team with the most participants. So whether it's a two or one, two on one or a three on one, I would want to be on that side. I would want to be the third person um, because I'm not a wrestler. I'm a coward. I'm a manager. So like Bobby Heenan, I'd want to stay coward in the corner and only get in to get my cheap shots. And... Uh, yeah, and I think it would be a lot of fun. I would get a lot of heat, and uh, I think it, yeah, that's what kind of match I'd want to be in. But if I was to be a wrestler, wrestler, and know what I was doing, and, uh, you know, wanting to become champion or something, I would say I'd want to be maybe in a submissions match. I'd want to be a submission type wrestler. Maybe a submission is Iron Man match. That'd be great. The most of the submissions in like a half hour or so. I think that'd be cool. Um, if you could be the GM in WWE, which would you choose? Or which which brand would I choose? Oh, okay. Right on. I think that's what I get. Because, you, you know, if you could be the GM for any brand, oh, any brand in WWE, which one would you choose and why? Um, I honestly would choose SmackDown. Um, because I'm sick of Teddy Long, and I really like their roster better. It's a lot better opposed to wrestling, and I can make some really good matches over there. Uh, what would you prefer, or what do I prefer? WWE, TNA, or ROH? I like them all for different reasons, and it's funny, actually, why I like them for the reasons. The reasons being, WWE is my fantasy, is my soap opera. Uh, it's my days of our lives. I watch WWE for storylines. TNA, I watch because it's totally different. They may have la, you know, lack of direction or confusion and have no idea what the fuck they're doing, but it's different. You know, a lot of people say, "Oh, no, it's not. It's different. It's not different. It's WCW 2001 all over again." Well, I don't feel it that way. Um, it's got a lot of similarities. If you look at WWE right now, it's got a lot of slim similarities. So I just think TNA is different regardless. Um, and ROH, I love ROH because the wrestling is fucking superior. So I like them all for whatever. 
for their, for their own reasons. And why do I like wrestling? Wrestling is the just awesome because it's real and fantasy all wrapped into one. And you can just use your imagination and be a kid again. Every time, every time you watch wrestling, you feel like you're a kid again. And you can just use your imagination. And you know it's not real, but you got that two hours or an hour and 59 minutes that you just like so involved and you love it. And I don't know. I don't know. That's the only way you can say it. I love wrestling because to me, it just wraps me up and it consumes me. And I'm away from everything for however many hours the show is or whatever it is I'm watching. You know, it's, uh, it's fucking magical. It really is. You know, you got people that fly. You got evil. You got good. I don't know. It's just, I love everything about it. You know, the athleticism, the acting, the poor acting. Um, I just love it. I really, really do. Um, moving on. I'm going to be doing this quick. Last question. Um, who are my favorite wrestlers? I always get this question. Um, All-time favorite is uh, Ricky Steamboat. Current favorite. Oh, geez. I don't know. Uh, Davy Richards. Michael Elgin. Um, who else do I like? Who's in, who's over in TNA that I'm loving right now? Um, Kurt Angle. I love Kurt Angle. He's the boss. He's my favorite. Um, who am I loving on uh, WWE? I like John Morrison. Uh, it's hard to think off the top of my head. Brian Danielson. Or Daniel Bryan. Alberto Del Rio. Um, obviously CM Punk, always like CM Punk. Um, so yeah, those are just a few to, uh, say, say, yeah, to, uh, give you an idea. And you know what? I was going to go longer, but it's already 17 minutes. And I wanted to go longer to let you know about my wrestling, my, of what I do with wrestling, how I got involved in all that stuff. Uh, maybe we'll save that for next week, or maybe that'll be a, continuation later on. I just don't want to go on and bore you guys because I can talk forever about that. So maybe that'll just be a, a show or a episode or whatever on its own. But anyways, folks, I am Big Mike. This has been me telling you more, and that's that.